Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to talk through the installation of a fence that I put in my uh, front yard garden space in a landscape project that I'm working on in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you can follow along. And there's a playlist on the channel called New House, and you can go back and see what this front yard space actually looked like uh, just maybe 12 months ago or so. Uh, it's come a long way since then. Uh, I wanted to put some sort of separation uh, between the my front garden space, this is a very small urban lot, um, on the edges and out here in the front along the street. I basically wanted to create two separate garden spaces. And so the purpose of the ones on the edge, which you'll see in a minute, um, are to differentiate the lot, but not really to keep anyone out. These aren't really fences. They're just little panels uh, to differentiate uh, different spaces. Uh, I treated the two spaces um, somewhat differently. Uh, the, front, uh, the front fence, uh, we'll, we'll walk down it in just a second, is perfectly level. And so every single, the top of every single 4 by 4 these caps are not, um, not nailed on yet, the top of every single 4 by 4 that you'll see on this fence are level. On the side pieces, I stepped them up because the grade actually um, increases as it goes back uh, further in the lot. So we'll see that in just a minute. I, uh, put in some large boulders uh, down here at the bottom um, on two sections of the fence and then I sculpted uh, the um, the pickets around those to make those uh, stones appear to have been here for a long period of time and I'm just in the process of putting these copper caps on the top of these 4 by 4 So let's walk down and uh, take a look. Uh, again, the front the front section of this fence has basically just been used to create a garden space on the road side of the property. So now I have the opportunity to landscape on that side of the fence and on this side of the fence and again create two separate spaces. What I want to end up with here is most of the fence kind of blocked and I, and I would just want to see pieces like this, okay? Uh, and then again I'm, I'm putting those caps on top of the uh, on top of the four befores. You'll notice that I sculpted the top of the pickets up uh, on the front, and when we get over and look at the side, I sculpted them down. Is there a particular reason for doing that? No. Uh, it was just interesting to me at the time. I've probably built, I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens of these types of screening fences, where they're not really fences, but they're just, just some sort of garden screening. Uh, and I've never built one the same. And so um, if I built this one again tomorrow, it would probably be slightly different. Uh, I think this is one of those areas where you can just, you can go for it. Um, you know, if you want to use a heavy lattice, uh, that would have looked great, uh, for, you know, a framed in lattice. Uh, one of the other things I did here was I used two different thicknesses of pickets. And so this is about a six inch wide um, fence picket here. And this one is a four inch picket. And I just rotated them uh, back and forth. Um, could have used the same thickness. Uh, all the way across. It wouldn't have mattered, uh, uh, really. Lumber's quite expensive right now, and so uh, uh, I went with the most inexpensive pickets I could find, and then I, w I wanted to have two different sizes to differentiate. Uh, I've got these uh, copper tops are actually solar lights, and so um, here at the entryway, uh, it will be lit up uh, at nighttime. It takes about three days for these things to charge up enough to actually put off any light uh, at all, but uh, um, that's the process uh, there. I used, uh, in order to um, have the uh, sculpting on the top of each of these sections of fence be the same, uh, I basically, um, I can take this off and I can take this off. That's why I've left them unconnected so I could talk about this. I basically took this uh, half inch uh, piece of PVC, which you can get inexpensively at Lowe's, and basically laid it up here and then used a pencil uh, to mark and then used a skill saw to cut this angle. And I basically made sure that I was uh, centered on the 4 by 4s the same each time. And so that I ended up with, as long as your 4 by 4s are uh, the, 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 the same width apart, um, then this should work. If you put this center to center, uh, it should give you the same, the same, uh, the same angle each time. Uh, to sculpt these tops or um, as you'll see on the other side uh, I went down uh, rather than up um, and that's um, basically the gist of the whys 
and uh, you know how those tops were were cut. I just it's a basic set of tools. I mean, I used a skill saw. Um, I used an electric drill to, uh, and I've used screws to uh, to assemble all of this. Uh, I cut all the tops uh, even by just using my skill saw and using a square. Uh, once I figured out uh, the height that I wanted all the way across, I put a string level. Uh, I just put a string from one side of the last four before at the end, all the way to the first four before where we started, and uh, and I used a line level which this line level just, it floats on this string basically and allows you to uh, level something over a long distance. And then again, I just marked the four befores uh, at that height uh, and you know, hit them with a pencil and then cut them off with my, uh, with my skill saw. And that's basically it. We'll walk over here and I'll show you the ones that are sculpted down and I'll show you how it's all held together. I've got the three panels on the edge of the property. Um, you know, my neighbors, perfectly lovely people. I uh, don't have any real reason to screen this uh, with a six foot tall fence or anything. Uh, I just wanted to create some sort of barrier. These stones are, that are here are about to be sunk into the ground. My mailman uh, has a route, a walking route, and he'll just come through here going to my neighbor's door uh, that way. I have the option, and somebody will point this out, I'm sure, to put the... Uh, uh, to put the pickets on the inside and have the decorative side of the fence be on my side, whatever. <laughs> That's up to you. I've left the decorative side on this side because when I'm riding down the road coming in, I can actually see these fence panels and I wanted them to be decorative uh, basically on the entrance uh, uh, down the road um, as you approach this garden space. Um, so again, this is basically, each of these panels is just two uh, four by fours that were leveled. Okay, they're probably 30 inches, 32 inches above the ground. Um, this was an eight foot, picture this as an eight foot um, four before. It was cut in half and then uh, each side is sunk down in the ground. Um, what is that, about 14 inches and then concreted uh, into the ground. Then the tops are cut off level. I measured consistently on every single one of these panels this, uh, this two by four that runs across this way is about eight inches from the top. The bottom of that two by four is about eight inches from the top. I can't remember how far down this one was, maybe 19 inches to the bottom of that two by four. And then I use these uh, joist hangers. This is a really super cheap joist hanger. You wouldn't do any real construction on your house with that type of, that skinny little joist hanger. But this is uh, like an 88 cent little joist hanger from Home Depot. Uh, if you get a joist hanger like you'd use on a deck or something that would be uh those are like three bucks a piece and kind of unnecessary for a tiny little fence like this so that's about an 88 cent part and then from there uh, i had no idea how these pickets would lay out you know at the point that i've got these four befores concreted in i've got the two befores here all i did was lay the pickets out on the front um and st and spaced them and so um uh, I started out, I guess there's a, a wide one in the middle right there. So I started with a wide one, two skinny ones, two wide ones, two skinny ones, two wide ones. It may have worked out differently um, given a different width between these four befores. Kind of doesn't matter, uh, honestly. These are about five feet wide, uh, each of these sections. There was about a six inch grade difference between the first, the first panel, uh, which is right here. Um, there's a th it's three inches higher on this one and then three inches higher uh, on the uh, last panel. And so each of these steps up uh, three inches um, as they go up the uh, lot line. And so um, the tops of them, again, are level and each of them three inches higher than the last. Again, when I laid these out, uh, you know, I was trying to leave maybe an inch uh, in between each one. Uh, I measured a little bit here uh, in between each of these, but it's not exact. Like if you went through and measured the gap between each of these boards, they're all slightly different. At the end of the day, nobody's gonna notice that as long as they're reasonably close. Uh, and again, you know, if you had a different width here, you'd end up with some different combo of pickets. Don't stress about it. It's just not that big of a deal. I have not finished this yet. And the reason I haven't put any sort of finish on it, any kind of uh, protection, 
uh, at all is because right now lumber, this lumber is super, super wet. Uh, the way, um, the way the lumber market went, um, it's all being pressure treated and then shipped directly to the stores. And so it's super heavy. And so I'm just gonna let it dry out for a few months and then I'll come back in here and uh, I'll put some sort of clear, uh, a clear coat of protection uh, on it and uh, that'll be it. Uh, and again, I'm, I've gotta attach these, uh, I gotta attach these caps right here to prevent rot in the top of those uh, four by fours. Uh, in terms of how you know, I concreted these four befores in the ground. I'm not even going to talk about. I'm not even going to talk about that. If you watched 700 um, YouTube videos about how to concrete a four by four into the ground, you'd get 700 different opinions uh, really quickly. But I felt on something this short, it probably doesn't matter all that much. If you're putting, you know, something around 20, 25 percent of that post down in the ground uh, into concrete, it probably doesn't matter all that much. This thing. Um, uh, it would be a long, long time before this rotted. If this was a six foot tall fence, I might go about um, sealing the bottom of these four befores and uh, putting a little additional time into how I treated them uh, going into the ground. But again, there's no wind load on this. There's no pressure on it. Uh, it's gonna be here for a long, long time as long as I, um, as long as I seal this wood uh, from the elements uh, sometime before this year is over. So I think that's about it. I, I, mean, I think I covered it um, pretty well. I did use screws to screw these in. So there's two screws in the top, two screws in the bottom um, on each of these. The, um, I also use screws uh, on the uh, joist hangers uh, that I put the, put the two befores on. And that's pretty much it. It's four before concreted in the ground. And I think, um, you know, rather than copy exactly what I've done here, um, do you, you know, um, do something, do, do, you know, you can do whatever you want to do on something like this. Um, I really like that um, heavy duty lattice. Look, I don't like the flimsy that you can get super flimsy lattice, but you can get heavy duty lattice. And so, so a lattice piece in here that was framed in on the top and the bottom would look great uh, as well. And it was one of the considerations I had for this project. Thank you guys for watching uh, and uh, following along. And don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell notification so you're alerted when I upload a video. And uh, see you soon.